Vayikra Perek 9 is primarily concerned with the consecration of the Mishkan. If we hearken back to the events of the Egel HaZahav, Moshe returned with the second set of Luchot on the 10th day of Tishrei, and for the following six months the people were involved in the building, the establishment of the Mishkan. Once the Mishkan had been built, it went through an eight-day period of consecration. This is referred to as the Yemei Hamiluyim. As of Perak 9, we are dealing with the Yom Hashmini, the eighth and final day for the consecration of the Mishkan. Bulk of this Perak deals with the various Karbanot of day eight. There were Karbanot for the Kohen Gadol, also Karbanot for the community, instructions were given, and those Karbanot were actually sacrificed. Towards the end of the Perek, in Pasuk 22 and 23, Aharon blesses the people. Both Moshe and Aharon enter the Ohel Moed. Whatever happens there, the Chumash is silent, they come out, and both Moshe and Aharon once again bless the people. Following this blessing, there's an visual acceptance of the Karbanot, with a fire coming down from Shomayim and consuming the karbanot meat that was upon the Mizbeach. Aharon HaKohen had four sons, two of whom, Nadav and Avihu, are the subject of the opening Pasukim of Perek Yud, Perek 10. On the Yom Hashmini, on the eighth day, the Chumash informs us that the uh, two sons, Nadav and Avihu, took their firepans, um, placed coals into the firepans, placed the ketoret, upon those fire plans as part of the Avodah of the Yom Hashmini. The Chumash informs us that uh, this offering was an Eish Zara, an Im inappropriate offering, the consequences of which are described in Pasuk 2, Vatetze Eish Milifne Hashem, a uh, fire emanates from Hashem, Vatochal Atama consumes them to the point that Vayamutu, to the point that they died, Lifnei Hashem. In his commentary to Pasuk Bet, Rashi appears to be grappling with what it was that the two sons Nadav and Avihu did that warranted their death. There are four components to this Rashi. Option one comes from Rabbi Eliezer. Option two from Rabbi Yishmael. Component three is where Rashi provides us with a textual basis in support of the position of Rabbi Ishmael, while with component 4, Rashi provides us with a mashal, with which one can better understand the position adopted by Rabbi Ishmael.